single phase dual converter we know that, that the semi converter is going to operate in first quadrant that is vdc and rdc both are having the positive polarities and this is acts as a rectifier whereas the full wave converter is going to operate in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 in first quadrant it acts as rectifier in fourth quadrant it acts as inverter in this our voltage is having both the polarities whereas the current is having only positive polarity when we need a four quadrant operation where we need to reverse the current also we need to go for a dual converter which is going to act in four quadrants a dual converter consisting of two converters that is converter 1 and converter 2 where converter 1 is operated at an firing angle of alpha 1 converter 2 is operated at an firing angle of alpha 2 a single phase dual converter is the combination of two converter as shown in this figure and we know the output voltage of full wave converter that VDC1, V01 in our case is given by 2 Vr by pi cos alpha 1. For the converter 2, that VDC2 is equal to, in our case it is minus V02, that equals to minus 2 Vm by pi cos alpha 2. From these two equations we can write v01 equals to minus v02 from which we can write this as 2 vm by pi cos alpha 1 equals to minus 2 vm by pi cos alpha 2 cos alpha 1 equals to minus cos alpha 2 alpha 2 equals to pi minus alpha 1 or in dual converter alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equals to pi or 180 degrees this is the condition to operate a dual converter we have two types of operations that is non-circulating current operation and second one is a circulating current operation for dual converter in non-circulating current operation at any instant of time only one converter is in operation if converter one is in operation then the converter 2 is in rest mode when converter 2 is in operation converter 1 is in rest mode the switching process of converter 1 to converter 2 is made by removing the firing signals to the converter 2 vice versa here there is no problem of circulating current whereas the second mode that is nothing but circulating current operation mode where both the converter 1 and converter 2 operates at the same instant whereas the converter 1 operates as a rectifier and converter 2 operates as an inverter so here we get the problem of circulating current this circulating current does not flow through the load but it circulates between the converters that can be taken care by a reactor circuit by limiting the circulating current within the limits the converter 1 operation when the input signal Vs is given between the terminals A and B then in first two half cycle T1 and T2 is turned on at an angle alpha 1 then the input voltage that is Vs is going to appear across the output then this is our V01 due to the presence of inductor in the load it's going to follow the input even in a negative half cycle then in negative half cycle at omega t equals to pi plus alpha 1 the thyristor t3 and t4 is turned on and the voltage is going to appear across the output in positive this negative voltage is going to appear across the, the load as current flowing direction from top to bottom of the load then this is due to t1 and the t2 whereas this is due to t3 and t4 this is the output of converter 1 converter 2 this is our input signal is given between A and B where A is the positive and B is the negative terminal but the voltage across the load is reversed so I am taking this as V02 positive below this and V02 negative above this then the thyristor T1 dash and T2 dash is triggered in the positive half cycle when firing angle omega t equals to alpha 2 the voltage is going to appear across the load so it's going to appear across the voltage in positive half cycle when it reaches the pi the voltage is reversed or else reverse voltage is flowing through the input terminals but this is in out of phase with the input terminal then 
this is going to continue in the negative direction and when the thyristor t3 dash and t4 dash is turned on then the input is going to appear across the thyristor and pass to half cycle and this is the output of converter 2 and we know that the output voltage of the real converter equals to v naught 1 plus v naught 2 let us try to redraw this in a single waveform this is v naught 1 the pass to this is negative of v naught now v naught 2 here it is a positive one and here it is a negative one so positive one is it continues up to alpha 2 in this peak now if you observe in this area that is 0 to alpha 1 both converter 1 and converter 2 is on v naught 1 plus v naught 2 from alpha 2 to pi plus alpha 2 also we have v naught 1 plus v naught 2 pi plus alpha 2 to 2 pi plus alpha 1 this is alpha 1 here also v naught 1 plus v naught 2 is there this is adding also adding if you retraw that alpha 1 alpha 2 pi this is pi plus alpha 1 2 pi pi plus alpha 2 so this is where both the voltages are adding up here we are going to get a circulating current in this area the converter 1 output voltage is equal to the converter 2 output voltage in this area also converter 1 output voltage is equal to converter 2 output voltage now the comparison between non-circulating current and circulating current modes first one only one converter operates at a time here both the converters operates simultaneously it operates in discontinuous mode it operates at continuous mode no reactor is needed we need a reactor to limit the circulating current there is no circulating current flows through the converter so efficiency is high since the circulating current is there the losses will be high as efficiency decreases the response is slow or switching takes a little bit of time here the response is fast here the converter loading equals to output load here the converter loading is more than output load this is cheaper due to the reactor this is costlier 